Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time you're watching this. <laughs> to be honest, because this is not live, even though I'm not going to edit it. Um, <laughs> I just want to say good day and thank you. My name is Joshua T. Berglin, and I am the creator of the World's Mayor Experience, which you can find at www.joshuatbarglin.com. <clears throat> Over the last few days, I have been jumping on video and just talking directly to you, giving you updates. And I think I've shared devotionals too, which is kind of new. Again, I used to do that um, when I was an evangelist. And now I'm doing it because the this, the, <clears throat> this devotional that I'm reading is... Um, it seems to be pretty timely and 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 i didn't want to ignore that because <laughs> because it just made sense you know uh the, these devotionals like every day so i don't even know what today says but i'm going to read that i also want to just tell you that i'm doing better today um i last night i had a really good i had a good night i went in, i went in the hot tub and with jessica and it was nice we went to a hotel and yes sweetheart our cats back well i'm i'm talking to people real quick hold on i'll be okay i'll be right there honey <laughs> we have a straight cat that really likes us and it won't go away and we already have two cats so if <laughs> we have a dog we don't need another cat but guess what? I bet we're going to have another cat. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm doing so much better. Um, yesterday morning was hell. <laughs> it was awful. And, and I've been going to the gym to work out because it helps. Um, you know if anything helps keep my mind right and uh that is just part of my routine it's part of my quiet time and and i and i'm trying to do all the things that i love because if i stop doing the things that i love then i'm letting the enemy win and i'm not letting the enemy win because I'm I'm crying because I'm happy. By the way, uh -huh. I'm so grateful for all the support, and um, that support is helping me. But mm, and Joshua one nine. And that's all I got to say. Joshua 1 9. This is, um, this has been very hard, but I have learned so much about myself and, um, that I have learned a lot about other people too. And it's very, very heartwarming to me to know that there's so many awesome people out there and and i don't i'm starting to think that yeah i know that we're all a little screwed up but i don't think we give ourselves enough credit for being human beings because i've seen more good human beings in the last what is it nine days now than i've seen in my life so for what it's worth you know god bless you and <laughs> you're not as horrible as people say <laughs> okay all right so i just want to be quick with it because here's what's going to happen today um i'm gonna go be active again my mom and robbie my stepdad are coming in town and i get to see my mom and Jessica's gonna be here. 
the girls are at their other dad's house. But um, I'm going to have a good day. And I want you to, too. So I just want to do this real quick. Mm, I didn't mean to snort in your in your ear. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is called staying rich. I don't even know what this is going to say. So here we go. Some of you are standing in shoes similar to my own. You are nearing the end of your life. <laughs> this didn't start good. <laughs> Maybe I should have proofread the devotional before I started reading something about the end of someone's life. <laughs> okay. Sorry, this is God's. No, it's not God's word. This is a devotional. <laughs> it's okay that I'm laughing. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll get my stuff together. Sorry. <laughs> it feels good to laugh. It feels so good to laugh. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Okay. Okay. I'll get my crap together now. <laughs> this is not professional broadcasting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're. <laughs> You are nearing the end of your life. Focus. Calm down. You are nearing the end of your life. <laughs> Wondering how to finish well and leave a legacy. Okay, I need to be serious about this. You are nearing the end of your life, wondering how to finish well and leave a legacy that will bless your family and those interact with some for generations to come. Some of you are just starting out in life, taking your first steps towards those dreams and plans. Whether you're at the end of your, whether you are at the end of the beginning of life, I want to challenge you to do three things. One, work with all of your heart for God, not for men. Oh my God, I love that. I'm doing this, I'm reading that over again. Whether you're at the end or the beginning of your life, I want to challenge you to do three things. Number one, work with all your heart for God and not for men, amen, amen to that. Number two, hold your plans lightly because you really have no idea what the Lord has in store. Hold on, hold your plans lightly because you really have no idea what the Lord has in store. Ugh, finally. Oh, I hate it when devotionals do that. Ugh. Okay, number three. I don't hate it. I actually like it. Number three, consider now what you want your legacy to be. It is not too early to begin. When you're young, Sometimes we think there's a magic key in life that will answer all the questions or solve all the problems. It's easy to think that life possesses some big secret and that when it's easy, where to go? It easy, it's easy to think that life possesses some big secret and that when we find success somehow, we'll attain this key 
to unlock all the mysteries of life. But now, as part of the Amitrus faculty of life, I can say that it's much simpler than that. Be faithful with what God puts in front of you and invest in things of heaven. The decisions you make today will affect the legacy you leave behind. Whether you are a young businessman who has found himself encountering what the world sees as success, both in career and family life, or a young woman who recently graduated and has no idea what is in front of you, today is the right day to make your decision in light of truth that God owns it all. Live your life in this world while investing your wealth in the next. When you consider your life today, what are the things and people you are investing in that will last for an eternity? That speaks to my heart a great deal. I think that was probably pretty obvious because it made me a little emotional and if you hear a bunch of noise upstairs that's jessica rearranging the living room for the 15th time in two months i think <laughs> i don't know okay so this is uh this is the verse that came with it matthew 6 19 through 21 Ooh, this is the red text. You know what that means. Jesus said it. So that's when you should pay attention. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When I was dreaming of being a talk show host when I was a kid, thinking of Oprah, Don Imus, and, um, Opie and Anthony, Howard Stern, uh, even, even local radio guys, Rick and Brad in Oklahoma City, the people from KOMA. Uh, gosh, even that goofy show, I, I, I can't remember all of them. But, the, you know, there's all these shows, and then you travel, and you hear other talk radio. I, I, was, I it was influenced by it all, infomercials, things like that. And, you know, when I was dreaming of doing that, it was, you know, glitz and glamour and all that other thing, all that other stuff. And that's the dream I've always had, to be a talk show host. And to I love to MC also. And I like to pitch products. I enjoy it. I like talking about products that are interesting and help people. So <clears throat> when I gave my life to the Lord uh, in what was my sixth time in jail, and it's a pretty wild story. It's a, it's a supernatural story. I think it was going to take something supernatural for God to get a hold of me, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, because I'm really hard-headed. But when I surrendered my life to, to the Lord, it was simply by saying, my life is no longer my own. Take my life. It's yours. And so when I said that, what that really meant was all these things that I wanted to do with my life, I tried doing it my way. I tried doing it my way. I tried doing it, you know, the way I thought was best. And well, that failed because six times in jail, six overdoses, HIV, chem sex addiction, uh, what, how many divorces? <laughs> well, it was, it was only two at that time. Losing my kids, all of it. So I screwed up my life trying to be in control over it. So when I said take my life, that meant I'm going to 
let you use me. I'm, 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 I, I, well, I don't know if it's I'm going to let you use me, but I'm now willing to be used by you, and I'm willing to do what I believe it is that you are leading me to do. And, you know, that gets a little convoluted sometimes. I don't know if that's the right word. Basically, like, I... I believe that I'm doing everything that God is telling me to do. Now, that could make me crazy, too, you know, thinking that God's inside of me and God is guiding me. <laughs> I mean, some people could look at that, that that belongs in the loony bin, but that's what I believe. So, you know, it says in the Bible that God's inside of me. So why, why I mean, and it feels like God's inside of me. So I don't even need the Bible to tell me God's inside of me at this point. But sorry for snorting in the microphone. Um, anyway, my point is this: that that was the sac that that's the decision I made. But here's the cool part: when I decided to surrender my will for His, um, I still ended up doing everything I wanted to do. Because everything I wanted to do is everything I dreamed of doing, and I guess my dreams came from him. But I never thought that I would be using having a talk show and broadcasting and emceeing and media and all of the other things I get to do. I never thought I'd be doing it, helping people in shadow prisons and <laughs> former trafficking victims and people that were mentally unique like me. I never thought that was going to be the case. But you know what? awesome and um because it's interesting when we get to use our gifts and our talents it kind of doesn't matter what we're doing with them like if we're getting to use them in a way that we're getting to express our talent and our joy and maybe even use our intellectual property it's like how can you be bad how can you be upset like you know like it's grateful. Do I have big dreams of hosting the Oscars one day and uh, you know making the world's mayor experience a world tour and um, be the humanitarian tour vision? You know how we want to help people. Hi, Rusty. You all want to say hi to the dog real quick? Yeah. Um. So. Anyway. <clears throat> but here's I kind of lost my point there but here's the point when we give our life to God to use or to be used by him her, when we do that here's the best part we don't give up things that we love we just find out what we love may not be what we thought we loved. The things that we thought we were going to love and bring us joy may be the very thing that ends up killing us. But God still puts us in a position to do what we love using the same gifts and talents that we would have used before, but doing it in a way that not only do we get to show love to other people, we get to have love back. And maybe that's messed up. Maybe that doesn't make sense. I don't know a Bible verse to back that up. But I know that for true in my own life. So thank you for listening. And thank you for your prayers. I'm having a much better day today. And I'm going to have a good day. Um, and, I, and your encouragement and support has meant a lot. But... <clears throat> I really, really, really want to encourage you all to surrender your will for his because it's a better life. And it's a tough, it can get tough, but it's a better life. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.